I know you've been researching chemical media all day long. What the heck is it? How does it work? Which brands are best? Do I even need it? Well, I'm glad you decided to watch this video because you hit the jackpot. Let's get all your chemical media questions and concerns answered in this one video. If it's your first time here, welcome. My name is Kev and I try to make helpful videos on all topics of the aquarium hobby, which I now actually consider a lifestyle. When you got tanks this big, it's not a hobby anymore. <laughs> if you find this video helpful, consider subscribing because there's a lot more where this came from. So straight to the point with the most important facts. Number one, chemical media is media that can be added in your filter that will help in making your water crystal clear by absorbing and removing toxins, organic compounds, chemicals, medications, tannins, phosphates, heavy metals, even odor. Yeah, it can remove that funky smell that you get from time to time. But long story short, I know all you probably heard was that it can help make your water crystal clear. And that's okay, because we all want that. Number two, chemical media is not necessary in your aquarium. I have to say that again for all the trolls that are already beginning to write a paragraph in the comment section. Chemical media is not necessary. It is 100% optional. But make no mistake, if you feel your water could be just a little bit more clearer, yeah, chemical media is one of the many things that can help you get there. Number three, chemical media does exhaust itself and need to be replaced every so often. Typically about every 30 to 45 days, depending on your tank. So if you want to use it, be prepared to replace it. One type of chemical media can actually be recharged and reused after it's exhausted, but we'll get into that in a minute. Pure gen. Number four, where it goes in your filter is important as well. The order of media in your filter is determined by the direction of water in your filter. Water should first hit your mechanical media, then your bio media, and finally your chemical media. But I do have one exception to that rule. If you're using any of the Fluval FX6 series filters, if so, check that video out right there for best placements and why. And if you don't know what mechanical and biological media are, no worries, I promise you, you're on the right channel. You're gonna wanna watch my beginner's playlist right here. After this video though, not right now. I got more nuggets for you right here. So now that we got the most common facts out of the way, let's discuss some options. First, we've got activated carbon, also known as activated charcoal, which is probably the most commonly used chemical media out there because it's the cheapest and very effective. Activated carbon absorbs medications, toxins, and impurities in the water, including tannins, which make your water look yellowish or brown from the wood that could be in your tank. It can also absorb odors on those really bad days, but keep in mind, while this stuff will remove odors, there's a reason why your tank is stinky in the first place. So it's best to find the root cause. I've got you covered in that video right up there. Another thing to keep in mind is that when carbon is exhausted, meaning it cannot absorb anything else, it must be removed. If not, it'll eventually leach all those toxins that it absorbed right back into your water. No bueno. Now, how fast and at what rate does this happen? The verdict is still out. Some say it doesn't really happen in an aquarium environment. Some say that it does. It may really depend on your specific tank. So if you use activated carbon and you wanted to go another round with it, replace it with a new bag once exhausted, or you could choose to always run chemical media in your tank, and that's okay too, just make sure to stay on top of the replacements. One side note I do have to warn you about the consistent use of activated carbon is that there are some studies out there that have linked its use to hole in the head disease in some fish like Oscars and marine fish like Tangs but it hasn't been verified 100% by anyone that I know of yet. With that being said, if you use carbon for one or two rounds to get your impurities out of the water and get your water looking a little clearer, you should be absolutely fine. The two activated carbons I've used in the past are Marineland Activated Carbon and Seachem's Matrix Carbon. The one major benefit Matrix Carbon is that this will not release what it has absorbed back into the water like other activated carbons do. I'll have links to both of them in the description below. Second, we've got Purigen. Seachem Purigen is a special kind of beast. Not only does it absorb and remove many of the same things as activated carbon, but it can also remove ammonia, nitrite, and nitrate from your water indirectly. Keyword here is indirectly. Don't tell people the caveman said that Purigen removes nitrates. You might make people's heads explode. Purigen is an organic scavenging resin, meaning it seeks out nitrogenous organics specifically. Or in other words, poop. <laughs> from fish, from plants, from coral, also from dead fish, dead plants, dead coral, 
Yeah, all of those create organic waste. Those organics being absorbed and removed from your water by the purigen would have eventually decomposed and converted into ammonia, nitrite, and finally nitrate during the nitrogen cycle. Okay, time out, time out. What the heck am I talking about now? It's okay, I got you. Beginner's playlist right there. By the way, purigen is that one type of chemical media I mentioned earlier that can be recharged and reused once exhausted, you can do this by soaking it in a solution of bleach and water. You'll know when it's exhausted because it turns a darkish brown color and when it's recharged, it reverts back to its yellowish original color. Last but not least guys, we've got a great combination of the two previous forms in a chemical media called Chemipure Blue. Chemipure Blue combines activated carbon and purigen, so you get the best of both worlds in one chemical media. Only downside is that when it is exhausted, it needs to be removed and replaced. You can't just recharge the purigen part of it. It's also the most expensive of the three, but to each their own. It does get the job done. I'll have the link in the description as well. In my personal opinion, which is a biased one <laughs> because I love Seachem products, purigen has been my go-to product for years. Not only because it does the most, not only because it's rechargeable, but also because it's the best bang for your buck. You get more purigen that covers a bigger volume of water at the best price. And if you choose to recharge it, well, <laughs> you're a stud, aren't you? Real quick, I wanted to show you what these chemical media look like, depending on what type you get. Either in loose granules like these, or it can already come pre-packaged in a bag like these. If you're going with the loose granule type, you'll need to buy media bags to put them in so they can be placed into your filter without them spreading all over the place. I'll have links to the Seachem bag in the description below. Keeping the granules in bags is also good for when it's time to replace it. You can simply grab the whole bag and put a new bag in. But regardless of what you choose, all chemical media should be rinsed thoroughly outside of your aquarium to remove any dust or residue that you definitely don't want in your tank. And as you can see, some of these have a ton of <laughs> dust on them. Here's what activated carbon looks like during a rinse. Here's what Seachem Purigen looks like during a rinse. A little hard to see much, but there is some dust coming off of this bag. And finally, here's what Chemi Pure Blue looks like. Tons of dust in this bag. After you're all rinsed and clean, the bag can go in your HOB, in your canister filter, or in your sump. Chemical media can also be very efficient when used in a specific polishing filter, which makes it super easy to remove and replace when needed instead of having to disturb your standalone filter in order to get it out. A much more detailed explanation on that polishing filter up in the right hand corner, if you're interested. Okay, with all that being said, I don't personally use chemical media on a regular basis in any of my tanks. Like I said previously, it's not a necessity. It's an available option, more of a preference. But don't get me wrong, if I have the need to remove some medications or I install a new piece of wood that's leaching tannins, or my water just isn't looking as crispy clean as I am used to it looking, then yes, I'll definitely run my tank with chemical media for 30 to 60 days until I get back to my sweet spot. But I just wanna make it clear that it is possible to have a crystal clear tank without the use of chemical media. But it does take some time and experience to get it all dialed in. Would you like to pick my brain and get a quick crash course? Well, I put it all in one spot. Check the book out right there. Not gonna be disappointed. And if you've been wondering this whole video how I'm talking about water clarity, while this tank behind me is looking like this, super cloudy, then this video right here is gonna be very helpful to you. But first, don't forget to like the video if you found it helpful. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any new content and I will see you on the other side. Peace.